This screen recording is uh, to help those of you who might have gotten stuck along the way with um, your lab 2 on the stolen camel. Um, so I'll take it from the beginning and kind of illustrate how we would go about programming this text-based game. Um, again, this, this game is a game that originally came um, from a book a number of years ago, 1979. I actually borrowed the idea from the book Program Arcade Games with Python and Pygame. Um, so the idea of the game is fairly simple. Um, you stole a camel. You have to make your way across the Moby Desert. Natives are going to be tracking you. And we're going to set up a um, program to kind of run this. Uh, what you have right here, I think a number of you got stuck on this. This is actually just a sample of the game. So this is how it might look if you were playing it. Um, but if you actually want to program the game, we've got the programming guide down here. So we're going to kind of walk through these steps as we program our game. The first thing that we have to do then to complete this lab is create a new program that prints instructions to the screen. It basically tells the user um, what it is that we're doing. So we are going to have a couple print commands kind of at the beginning of our, our program here. So print, um, remember your print command, you've got to put everything that we want to put in, in text there. So we're going to say welcome to the camel, camel game. Now that we have um, put in the print commands, notice we did each line separately. Uh, that's We can use the that little forward slash n to signify a new line and put it down one line, uh, but we don't want our print commands to get so long that they go off the edge of our screen, so we'll just keep it like that. Um, our next step, if we go back to our programming guide, is to create a Boolean variable called done and set it equal to false. So done that's our variable, equals false. The next step is create a while loop that will keep loop looping while done is false. So we can write a while loop while not done. Uh, we could also have written that while done equals false, um, but it's a little more readable if we just say while not done. And whatever we put in this loop, indented in here, will continue until we turn done to true. Inside the loop, then, we need to keep printing out. You notice in the sample run, each time we make some selections, uh, it prints out some stuff. So we need to print out inside the loop these commands. So take a second and put in some print commands for each of those options. So option A is etc. Now that you've gotten the uh, print commands in, if you haven't, pause this video a second and go do that. Um, our next step, if we look back there, was to ask the... Uh, oops, didn't mean to mess up that document there. Um, the next step was to ask the user for their choice, you know, A, B, C, D, E, or Q, and um, make sure that uh, there's a little space so the quote the user doesn't um, sorry add, make sure to add a space before the quote so the user input doesn't run into your text um, so what we're gonna do is not print sorry we are going to create a new variable we'll just call it we could call it user choice or I'm just gonna call it choice and that equals input um, the user is going to input something and we got to put in a little prompt. Now in my prompt I'm going to put um, a slash n at the beginning that will print it one line down. I'll put a blank line in between these print commands here and uh, what it's going to print when it asks for input. And um, we'll say what's your choice? Question mark. Um, and again, I'm going to put a little space after that so that the user can input their choice and it'll be uh, just past that. It won't be right up against that question mark. So now we have a variable that's choice that will require the user's input. 
And the first thing we want to do is if choice equals uh, Q. Now, we've got a little bit of a problem in our statement here. Uh, right here I've got a capital Q and here I've got a lowercase Q. What if, what if the person puts a capital Q in? If they do that, then choice will not equal lowercase Q. So maybe what we want to do is to make it case insensitive is we'll make choice equal itself choice dot lower and it'll just turn it into a lowercase letter or if it were an entire string it would be uh, all lowercase letters so we're gonna do if choice is Q uh, then we're gonna set done to true um, we kinda did like this with the, the we used lower instead of upper um, but that way we made our statement in case insensitive so let's set done equal to true um, now would be a good time to test run your program um, it's gonna ask to save it if you haven't saved it yet you should save it and when we run we should see if we can quit I hit Q yeah it quit out of it and just for um, our sake we'll see if I do a capital Q it does the same thing it still quits so we got that part taken care of um, the next thing we do before we create our before our main program loop we need to create some variables to track how far we've traveled um, how thirsty we are um, how tired the camel is and also we need a variable for where our natives are and we're gonna set that equal to negative 20 basically saying that it's if we're starting ours at 0 they're negative 20 that means they're 20 miles back of where we are so before our loop we created that variable done uh, we also need to create some variables for the miles that we've traveled uh, our thirstiness I don't know if that's a word but I'm just gonna call it thirst set that equal to zero uh, we also need tired variable how tired the camel is and we need a variable for the natives we set that to negative 20 um, if this were if we were really gonna make this good we probably should make these variables really readable for the user uh, or for somebody else who would look at our code um, so we might change it to miles traveled um, putting the underscore in there uh, but for my program because I'm probably the only one looking at it I'm just gonna keep those very simple variables all right next up oops, we need to do oh I forgot we need to set an additional number of drinks in the canteen we need a canteen variable so this is one that you might change later on uh, but I'm just gonna set my initial drinks at three and and see what happens um, next we need an else if in our main loop we've got a program it's gonna print this stuff it's gonna take my choice and then if it's Q it's gonna quit the next thing then would be well what if if the choice is not Q we want else if the choice equals and we'll do E and what do we want to happen if the choice is E we want to print our status so we want it to print out something like this so we've got a couple print commands again so print and I'm just gonna do the first one here miles traveled and notice I put a space after the miles traveled and then a comma notice I can separate them with commas and it will um, it'll put the next thing in so miles traveled and I'll put miles and um, I guess that's all I need so that's my print command um, do the same sort of thing for the drinks and canteen and the natives how far behind they are and just like that I'm back uh, hopefully you figured that else if for the print um, maybe the one tricky thing was the natives are and how many miles behind are they well they're the miles that I've traveled minus the 
miles that the natives have traveled, uh, that's how many miles behind me they are. Notice all of this stuff is still indented in the same because it's all part of this while loop. And so the next thing that we need um, is another else if to uh, handle if we want to stop for the night. So our stop for the night was if our choice was D. So let's do that one. Um, this is the last one that I'm going to show you, and then hopefully you can figure it out uh, going forward from here. So else if choice equals D. What are we going to do if we stop for the night? Well, a few things are probably going to have to happen. So let's jump back here. Um, if the user does this, then we need to reset the tiredness equal to zero. So we need to reset tired equals zero. Just like that, we've reset tired to equal zero in case we had uh, increased what tired was at any point, um, which we'll do in when we're actually riding ahead full speed or at moderate speed. Um, the next thing we need, we need to print that the camel is happy. So we'll do a print. Your camel is happy. And then we need to move the natives up a random amount from 7 to 14 or so. So what we need to do is we need to move natives up. So natives equal itself natives plus, and now we want a random amount. Um, unfortunately, we haven't imported random at this point. So what we need to do at the very beginning of our program, we probably want to import the random module. This will allow us to use those functions for random. So we can use plus random, there we go, dot rand range. And we can say from 7 to, if we want to include 14, we'd want to go all the way up to 15, because uh, that'll be inclusive of 14, but not 15 at that point. So I'll do natives equals natives plus rand range. At this point, we should probably test our program. So I'm going to hit run, just F5. Uh, it's going to need to be saved for that, so we save it. We'll check if our things work. So my first choice will be do a status check. Oops, here we go. Status check. And it says I have traveled zero miles. I have three drinks in my canteen. The natives are uh, 20 miles behind me. What happens if I stop for the night? My camel is happy. And now I can check my status again. And it says miles traveled, zero still. Drinks in my canteen, still three, but now the natives are only seven miles behind me. I still haven't um, put in anything for going ahead at full speed, going ahead at moderate speed, or drinking from my canteen. So all I'm going to do is quit, and I'm going to leave it there for you to then figure out how to do the rest of the program. Um, I hope that helps.